Hey guys, welcome to Science Ki Dunia. If you like this video, then please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you may get further notifications of the topic we study. Today we will be studying cell and cell organelles. You see a large variety of animals and plants in your surrounding. They all are of various shapes and size and they all look different to each other. But one thing is common in all of them that they all are made up of a small unit of life that is cell. We can define cell as the basic structural and functional unit of life. The word cell means compartment. So we need microscope for the observation of cell because we cannot see it with our naked eyes. Cells are present both in plants as well as in animals. So this one is the animal cell and this is the plant cell. The cell is made up of many components like plasma, membrane, cell wall and cytoplasm. Let's see one by one. So the first component is cell wall. Cell wall is an elastic and strong coat around the cell membrane. It is found around the cells of algae, fungi and plants. Animal cells lacks the cell wall. It is mainly composed of carbohydrates like cellulose and pectins. So what are the functions of the cell wall? The function of the cell walls are to support and to protect the cell by preventing the entry of excess water in the cell. Our next component is plasma membrane. Let's see the structure of plasma membrane. The protein molecules are embedded in two layers of phospholipids. Plasma membrane is said to be selectively permeable as it allows some substances to enter the cell while it prevents the other substances. Due to this property, molecules which are useful like water, salt or oxygen enter the cell and the carbon dioxide takes exits f exit from the cell. Let's see the activities that consume cellular energy. Two terms here come in the picture. First is endocytosis and the second one is exocytosis. Endocytosis means to engulf the food and other substances from the outer environment. And exocytosis is a process to excrete waste material out of the cell. Diffusion and osmosis are the two processes that don't consume cellular energy. The diffusion means entry or exit of small molecules like oxygen, carbon dioxide and osmosis is nothing but a traveling of water from a part with more water to a part with less water through selectively permeable membrane. It is a physical property with three possibilities. First is isotonic solution. Here what happens is the medium outside and inside the cell has same proportion of water. Therefore, the water doesn't go in or out. Second one is hypotonic solution. Here what happens is cell has less water than outside medium. So water enters the cell. So this is called as endoosmosis. Let's take an example. If the resins are kept in water, after some time they swell and they become turgid. Okay. And the next one is hypertonic solution. If the cell has less water than the outside medium, so water comes out of the cell and the process is called as exoosmosis. The next cell component we are studying is cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is nothing but a fluid between plasma membrane and nucleus. It is a moving sticky substance. Many cell organelles are suspended in this cytoplasm. The part of the cytoplasm other than organelle is the cytosol. So what does cytosol do? It stores the vital substances like amino acids, glucose, vitamins, etc. In animal cells, cytoplasm is more granular and dense while in plant cells it is thin and mostly pushed to the periphery due to a larger central vacuole. Okay. Now we will study what is cell organelle and what are the cell organelles and what are their functions also. So an organelle is a specialized subunit having specific function within the cell. In simple words, they are the organs of the cell. There are many cell organelles like nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi complex, lysosome, mitochondria, vacuoles, plastids, chloroplasts, etc. So let's see one by one. 
Our first cell organelle is nucleus. When the cell is observed under the electron microscope, we can see the nucleus covered by double layered membrane with small pores in it. So what does this pores do? This pores allows the passage of material in or out of the nucleus. Nucleus has one round nucleolus and a network of chromatin fibers in it as you can see in the diagram. Chromatin fibers are thin thread like structures which, which contains to form thick chromosome. So let's see the function of the nucleus. Nucleus controls all the metabolic activities of the cell and also the cell division. It is also involved in the transmission of hereditary characters from parents to offsprings. Our next cell organelle is endoplasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum is nothing but a membrane with many folds. It is a net like structure consisting of interconnected small tubes and sheets which are filled with the fluid. Let's see the location of endoplasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum is connected to nucleus from inner side to plasma membrane from outer side. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. One is rough endoplasmic reticulum and the other one is soft endoplasmic reticulum. The function of the endoplasmic reticulum is that it is the framework that supports the cell. The toxins that have entered the body through the food, air or water are made soluble by endoplasmic reticulum and it is flushed out of the body. The third one is Golgi complex. It is located in the cytoplasm next to endoplasmic reticulum and it is near the cell nucleus. Camilo Golgi was a scientist who discovered Golgi complex. In the year 1898, Camilo Golgi discovered Golgi complex by using silver staining method in the, in the nerve cells of owl. Golgi complex is made up of 5 to 8 hollow and flat sacs placed parallel to each other. The finger like structure you can see. These sacs are called as cisternae. Cisternae are filled with different enzymes. There, there are small and large sized vesicles present in Golgi complex. Golgi complex is mainly known for transporting, modifying and packaging the proteins and lipids in vesicles for delivery to targeted destination. So how does it work? What does it function? Let's see. Firstly, proteins and lipids arrive packed in the vesicles. Protein and lipids are modified and then lastly, they are repacked and shipped wherever required, either inside or outside the cell. Hence, it is also known as a traffic system of the cell. The next one is lysosomes. Lysosomes are spherical bodies and it is a membrane bound organelle. It is also filled with the digestive enzymes. The function of lysosomes are, firstly, it it works as immune system. So the lysosomes destroys the virus and bacteria that attacks the cell. The second function is that demotelian squads. Golgi complex basically destroys the worn out cellular organelles and the organic debris present inside the cell. The third function is they are known as a suicide bags because whenever the cell comes the cell becomes old or damaged, lysosome bursts and enzyme digest their own cells. Hence, they are known as suicide bags. And during the starvation, lysosome digests the stored proteins and fats. So these are the functions of lysosomes. Our next organelle is mitochondria. Under the electron microscope, a mitochondrion is seen as a double membrane structure. The outer membrane is porous and the inner membrane is deeply folded. These folds are called as Christi. The inner cavity is filled with proteinaceous gel-like matrix containing ribosomes, phosphate, granules and DNA. Therefore, it can produce its own proteins. The energy is stored in mitochondria in the form of ATP. ATP means adenine triphosphate. Hence, mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse of the cell. The function of mitochondria is to produce energy-rich compound that is ATP. It synthesizes proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, etc. by using the energy in ATP. The next one is vacuoles. Vacuoles are the storage sacs for solid, liquid contents. They don't have any typical shape or size. The structure of vacuole changes according to the need of the cell. Vacuole is bounded by a single membrane. Let's see its function. Vacuoles maintain the osmotic pressure of the cell. It is also used to store metabolic byproducts and end products like glycogen, proteins and water. 
in animal cells uh, vacuole store waste products and food while in amoeba it stores food before digestion in the plant cell vacuoles are full of cell gap and provide turgidity rigidity to them the next organelle is plastids so have you wondered why the plants are green in color why the flowers have so many colors like red yellow orange etc the organelles which give such colors is present which is called as plastid it is only found in plant cells plastids have double membrane and they are of two type first is chromoplast and the second type is leucoplast chromoplast is a colored plastid while leucoplast are white or colorless plastid okay the next organelle is chloroplast it is found in plant cell chloroplasts are important for photosynthesis processes that take place in the leaves chlorophyll in the chloroplast traps the solar energy and converts it into the chemical energy stroma so what is stroma stroma is an alkaline aqueous fluid which is protein rich and it is present within the inner membrane of the chloroplast so what does this stroma do it contains enzyme dna ribosomes and carbohydrate which is further necessary for the photosynthesis process so let's see the functions of the chloroplast so as i told first function of chloroplast is to convert solar energy to chemical energy for making food second function is chloroplast gives different colors to what to flowers and fruits and the third function is leucoplast are involved in the synthesis synthesis and storage of food like starch oils and proteins let's see a quick difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell so what is eukaryotes and what are prokaryotes so eukaryotes are the organisms whose cells have nucleus enclosed within a membrane on the other hand there is no membrane bound organelle in the cells of prokaryotes size of eukaryotic cell is 5 to 100 micrometer on the other hand the size of prokaryotic cell is 1 to 10 micrometer in prokaryotic cell only one chromosome is present while there are more than one chromosome in eukaryotic cell nucleus mitochondria and plastids are present in eukaryotic cell and prokaryotic cell doesn't have any membrane bound cell organelle then the eukaryotic cell is present in highly evolved unicellular and multicellular plants and animals while prokaryotic cells is present in bacteria so that's it Thanks for watching and if you like this video then please comment down below and share with your friends thank you